Hi everyone, this is Kelly from The Truth and Story, and I have a little um, walkthrough to do with you. Um, I've actually been doing a lot with flowers, uh, and but and I'm going to talk. I'm going to do a video more about that whole thing um, Monday. I've got one other flower deck coming uh, on Monday, and then I'm going to do kind of a what I'm doing with that whole thing uh, and kind of talking about it in general. But so for today, let's just say this is a deck that I, somebody, I've seen this, other people had had it. I kind of decided I probably wasn't going to get it. Um, but then I started getting sucked into flowers and plant lore and the secret language of flowers and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and snag this because I had gotten the other um, decks that looked interesting to me about f with plants and flowers in it. And so I thought, I'm just going to go ahead and do this, get this one, uh, when I realized it had quotes on it. And I'm so glad I did because, A, I just love the packaging. Um... I have, in another video I have to do, I need to catch up on videos, um, I have the um, Sforza and the Madrone uh, comparison, and they have these boxes that I love. Well, I didn't, I thought maybe it was just for these, those special editions, but look at this is the same exact box. It's a little hinge, like a hinge box. It's nice and sturdy. It's the, it's wonderful. It's like a little oracle box, um, but to the size of the cards. Um, I absolutely love this. And so that was such a treat. It came with this little um, bag. Uh, you could put your cards in it if you wanted to. I wouldn't because look at this lovely little box. I mean, I suppose you could slide that in there. But but she does have, um, uh, the author does have uh, on her Instagram, that you could do this with many different things. You could put little bits of plants and flowers. Like somebody had sent me, oh, I don't have it. I usually have it right here, but I was shifting things around. A little bag of like dried herbs and dried flowers and crystals and things and so you could kind of have like a little bag of miscellaneous stuff in this if you wanted but it's a nice little touch again I, I'm not a huge fan of these organza bags I don't really uh, I do use mine for various things but it's usually for something like that like maybe I'll put some crystals in um, and that kind of thing on uh, some dried plants some, something like that but I probably I would not usually I don't ever, ha I don't have any, I think, uh, or decks in an organza bag. So, but nice little touch. Doesn't matter because this is so wonderful that the rest doesn't matter. It's got a nice little ribbon thing to pick it up and open. It feels very Victorian. It's beautiful. You know, Victorian, you know, the illustrations on the front. So this is called the Botanical uh, Inspirations Deck and Book Set by Lynn Arajo, Arajo, Araujo, A R A U J O. I could be wrong. I apologize if I'm slaughtering her name. Um, this uh, features the secret meanings and messages of the flowers with the treasured artwork of Pierre Joseph Ridao. Guidebook represents insightful vignettes called from history, lore, and legend. That's what excites me. And all because all flowers have stories to tell. So there are 44 cards and a 100 page little book. Booklet, uh, guidebook that goes with it as well as a fold-out guide to the secret language of flowers and of course the organza bag. I cannot remember how much I paid for this but I want to say um, it was like 15 or 20 dollars. I know it wasn't more than 20 dollars on Amazon. So here you have it. You have this beautiful teal color on the inside and kind of on the bottom. Uh, a gorgeous little bound booklet. Um, so cute. It reminds me of like the 1889 Lenormand little just lovely bound book. Um, and then of course you have another lovely little ribbon uh, to pull the cards up. And these I have down here just because I don't like them to get mixed in. Uh, but this is a card that talks about the illustrator. So these are illustrations that were taken from um, 
uh, a botanical illustrator, Pierre Joseph Rudow, who was born in 1759 and died in 1840. Um, and so it says Pierre Joseph Rudow was born to Flemish family of decorative painters. As a young man, he went to Paris, where he began painting the flowers of the royal gardens. His detailed etchings caught the attention of botanists, who taught him more about the anatomy of plants, and artists who introduced him to a new watercolor technique for illustrating flowers. Marie Antoinette hired Rudow to decorate the walls of her chateau. By the late 1790s, Rudow had become the most famous and sought-after flower painter in Europe. Empress Josephine invited him to come to Chateau de Malmaison to paint the flowers in her magnificent garden, which held over 200 variety of roses. Between 1817 and 1824, Rudow published a three-volume collection of his rose paintings called La Rose, his most famous publication. Since roses were Rudow's trademark, we have included four of his roses paint rose paintings in this botanical inspiration deck. So that's really great. I love knowing that about the artist, and I love that this is... Um, these illustrations are taken from this wonderful painter. And then there's also this little card here with sort of your basic, I'm not, to be honest, while it's really gorgeous, it's, it's lovely, I don't really know what purpose this holds because, you know, you have the guidebook with, um, well, let's see if it has that, yeah. So Amaryllis, Determination and Creative Achievement, it's right there in the symbolism. Um, and then the cards themselves have uh, the, the, that on here. So I'm not entirely sure what you would do with this outside of the cards itself and the booklet. Um, but it's, it's pretty. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you were actually going to want to maybe put together a bouquet or something like that, you'd have this kind of quick list. Um, but it's really beautiful. Everything that's done here is done in a gorgeous fashion uh, and I greatly it just gave me a great pleasure opening it up so let me set these to the side for a moment and let's take a look at the little guidebook which is adorable I love it it's got that lovely matte finish and it's beautiful so this is a, a 2017 deck I didn't realize this was a newer deck so we have um, from the uh, creator herself or the author, obviously, of the deck. Uh, um, not the illustrator, as we talked about, but the creator and pulling all of this together, being an avid gardener and a passion for antique botanical prints. I love this. Like, she collects uh, botanical ephemera, vintage seed packet art, tobacco inserts, illustrated volumes of flower lore, all this kinds of things. So this is something that's her passion. And I feel like you can really tell this. Now, I don't know how much of a say she had in all of this. You know, unfortunately, uh, with books and other thing, items, like once we um, once they go over to a, a bigger company, sometimes we don't have as much control. So I don't know how much of this was like her conception in terms of what it looks like, but you just kind of get that feeling of really um, loving uh, what she's doing. And that's really, uh, you know, we people respond to that when you know that somebody is just kind of coming from a place of their passion. You can feel that, you can sense that, and it really is exciting. And I definitely get the sense here. So it does talk about how this is a deck of 44 cards, each presenting a flower with its common name and Latin name or an alternative name. Underneath the images on the cards are quotations, see this is what gets me as the quotations, and keywords or phrases describing the symbolism of the flower. Um, and it talks about how in Victorian England, as well as other cultures, flowers were used to convey specific meanings and messages, especially in the coy rituals of courtship. Um, and so that's going to be taught, which is one of the reasons I how I found this or kind of gravitated to this. I love this. From the demure violet to the noble magnolia, all flowers have stories to tell and lessons to share. Flowers can be gentle reminders to keep our eyes and our hearts open. This is so true. Each lovely flower included in this deck also brings a message of wisdom and insight. It is hoped that this deck will be enjoyed by gardeners and all those who appreciate flowers for their beauty and their special ability to inspire and uplift us all. And then it gets into the cards. And so for each of the cards, let me find it. These are not in order. I'm not going to go through and put them back in order because I did use them and it was a really great reading. 
um, they were alphabetically organized um, and the guidebook is alphabetically organized thank you um, you can easily find them in there which I love um, let me find the anemone which is interesting or is the, yeah well the first one is really the amaryllis which I just saw there we go um, so here we have like a black and white illustration um, of the card. Some of them, they all really do pretty, you know, they're really quite lovely illustrations. This one's a little bit dark, but so is this image. Um, but there, you know, you have a lovely black and white image there. Um, and so we can see that on the card itself, we have the name of the plant, Amaryllis. Uh, and then under this we have amaryllis. I think it's the exact same thing. So I guess they don't all, of course, that may just be its name, so it doesn't have an extra name. But if it has a different, like a Latin name or such, it's underneath there. Um, and so then it has the sort of meaning, the symbolism. I think this comes from the secret language of flowers for determination and creative achievement. And then we have the quote, and this is a quote by Maya Angelou. You can't use up creativity the more you use the more you have how beautiful is that so we have that all right here just like what you would have on the card itself is on this page and then we have a little bit more I'm going to read this one so you get an idea according to legend Amaryllis was a love struck maiden who had who had to get creative in order to gain the affection of the handsome shepherd who was only interested in his flowers in desperation she pierced her own heart leaving a path of blood blood droplets to his front door. After 30 days, the droplets turned to stunning scarlet flowers. The shepherd was so taken with the flowers, he fell in love with Amaryllis and her heart was healed. The Amaryllis has come to be associated with pastoral poetry. To the Victorians, the winter-blooming Amaryllis was a symbol of determination that was often given to artists to inspire their creativity. Um, and then we have an inspirational message. When the amaryllis appears, it means your muses have blessed you with their inspiration. Fulfill your creative destiny and your achievements will be recognized and rewarded. So more of the divinatory meaning, so to speak. Can you believe this? There's so many, uh, you know, I just started, Patrick and I, uh, Patrick from, um, well, he was in 78 Cards. Now I think it's just Patrick uh, Fogarty. But um, we're kind of working way, our way through flowers from uh, the other, another deck, the Pythia uh, Oracle. And you know, we're just chewing because we're taking our time with them. We're sketch sketching them. We're looking up the lore and this kind of thing. And both of them, like one of them was Aconite, which is, you know, you it's from Cerebus, Cerebus, the three-headed dog splattering his like poisonous um, slobber on the ground, and that's where flower grew. And then we're doing. I was reading about the wood anemone, and it was like where Venus was crying. Her her tears, flowers would grow. And now we have this, you know, piercing her, and the blood dropping on the ground, and where the blood is dropping, then the flowers are growing. So it seems to be a lot of um, interesting and um, dramatic, epic things, such as that nature in my brief uh, study of flowers. So that's what we have. Really lovely to have that extra information. And then in the back, there are actually a couple spreads, which I was pre pleasantly surprised. A three-card uh, Fleur de Lis reading. Um, it says that the Fleur de Lis has several traditional meanings. The most common interpretations are faith, wisdom, and valor, or perfection, light, and life. You can use the Fleur de Lis pattern for a three card reading to bring needed insight to a personal issue you might be currently struggling with. Um, and so then there's actually an example of um, the card one is a situation as it is, card two is a course of action, and card three is a projects the improved outcome. Now definitely it would be an improved outcome because most of these cards have a real, they are affirmative and uplifting flower 
herbs apparently are very, especially wildflowers and beautiful flowers, are uplifting. So you're going to get sort of what, if you if you do this action, what is that, that good uh, improvement that we're going to see there. Um, and then the, there is a basic past, present, and future spread. Uh, in the back as well as again an example reading so really a lovely little guidebook you know it's nothing big but it's I love the little kind of story and, and what it's connected with Iris being connected to Iris the Greek goddess of the rainbow and so you're getting that little bit of information at least obviously if you were really interested in this you would want to get more information um, but I think this is a, is a great um, it's again it's this little set is just so beautiful so let's take a look at the cards, which are, of course, the star. Um, the backgrounds, now I am not a fan of writing on the backs of my decks, but this is really beautiful. Um, there is a copyright. Uh, thankfully, at least it's in white. The thing is, this is, and again, this is U.S. Games. This is nothing against the creator. I can't even read it. It's white. And I believe, because I know it's U.S. Games, that it's probably uh, 2017 U.S. Games. But I could be wrong. I, I have no clue because I can't read it. So if I can't read it, why is it, why is it there? So, but you all know, if you've watched my channel long enough, <laughs> you know how I feel about that. But that is really probably the least obnoxious of all of U.S. Games copyright symbols. Um, but again, if I can't even read it, what good's it doing there? Be that as it may, this is actually really beautiful. It just kind of goes with the big Victorian feel. Um, I don't mind it. And again, for me, as a general rule, I really dislike having deck titles on the backs of the cards. It's just one of those things. Again, just pet peeves, but this is beautiful. I don't mind it at all. It kind of just goes with the whole theme, so it doesn't bother me. Uh, the fronts are kind of a vintage look. Again, I have another, I have two decks. Actually, this is, I think, one of them. Yeah, so this has got a vintage front, a little bit lighter vintage. Um, but I have to got to do the sides of this and same thing here although it looks as it is actually looks really lovely so I you know I could do this try to find this minty kind of green here um, tealy beautiful green I'll have to show this to my friend Itzy as my my um, edging queen so I'll have to see if she can recommend something in that color because it's so beautiful I'd almost maybe want to go that color but be that or I could just go with this um, kind of a linen color or antique color there so let me zoom in so I love the backs the size oh dear a uh, pagan other worlds is I don't have good ones to show um, pagan other worlds is a little bit of a larger deck anyways um, one second here we go here's a Llewellyn card so yeah, it's about the same. It is slightly shorter, just by a hair, and just a, literally a hair uh, wider than a Llewellyn card. If that, if that, if you have a lot of people have Llewellyn cards, so it's a good one to compare it to. So it's a pretty standard like tarot size versus you know like a huge oracle, which I think really works well. There's really no reason to have these plants to be huge um, and so I think that this actually the size works really nicely with um, this and one thing I do love is because I plan on using it uh, some with my lavish earth so it, the lavish earth is a little bit taller but they're very similar in height uh, very close so that makes me happy as well so here we go. So as we said, we already talked about the amaryllis. Now I'm a huge quote person. I talked about this in live chat today. I was one of those people that had uh, index card boxes and I would say as from a young girl all the way through high school and even older than that until the internet and the World Wide Web got really running, I always kept boxes full of quotes. Um, they always, um, I always um, tagged them in books that I read and made sure that I would, uh, the ones that were just key to the books itself, I would file those away. 
Um, I'm just a huge fan of quotes. And so it's one of the reasons that I so love the Lavish Earth uh, um, affirmation cards. And so once I, I, once I used this deck so much, um, that's what kind of made me look at this again because I got so much out of this deck and I, I use this all the time that I thought this could only be a, a very similar experience and I needed to grab it as well. So again, we already read here Maya Angelo here. So here's Clematis, and I, I could say this wrong. Um, this is for intelligence and mental beauty. We have wisdom is the abstract of the past, but beauty is the promise of the future. Oliver Wendell Holmes. I love quotes. Here we have the daffodil, rebirth and new beginnings. New beginnings are often disguised as painful endings, Lao Tse. I love that, Lao Tzu. Here we have Gloxinia, uh, love at first sight and proud spirit. When I saw you, I fell in love and you smiled because you knew. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna try not to read them all, but I can't promise. Uh, you can skip through here. Um, here's a garden heliotrope, devotion and dreams fulfilled. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Eleanor Roosevelt, love that. Gladiola, we have the Helen Keller, so it's about strength of character and moral integrity, and we have a Helen Keller quote here, only through experience of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, vision cleared, ambition inspired, and success achieved. Love that. I love hydrangeas. Here's a hydrangea. Thought, thankfulness for understanding. Before we can forgive one another, we have to understand one another. So true. Emma Goldman. I know, I know, I can't do this. I love snapdragons when I was a child were my favorite, favorite flowers. Um, grac graciousness and benevolence. Here we have the beautiful peony, which I also love for prosperity and compassion. Prosperity depends more on wanting what you have than on having what you want. Here is the Venus Mallow plant, which is a hibiscus kind of plant. Delicate, fleeting beauty that looks so delicate, doesn't it? When life is not coming up roses, look to the weeds and find the beauty hidden within them. I love that. Hello, dandelions. They are not weeds. They're wildflowers. <laughs> but look to the weeds still. Uh, here's one of the roses. So there are four roses in this deck uh, because, again, he was known for what the, the, that guide thinks. They do over 200 uh, species of roses. Um, which is so that's wonderful and we do know traditionally that the different color roses can mean different things as as in the yellow rose is very often connected with friendship and enthusiasm the pansy which is also one of my favorites and violets uh, sweet thoughts pray you love remember and there are pansies that's for thoughts I did I read this before and it kind of just went over my brain pray you love pray you love remember so it's telling you saying to their love to remember and there are pansies that's for thoughts so i guess it's the it's those little those happy memories and happy thoughts of love that's kind of an awkward quote I, of all of them that one's kind of like hmm and it's probably just me having a brain freeze. Uh, and then there's violets. Sometimes people confuse violets and, and pansies um, for faithfulness and modesty. Apple blossoms for choices, knowledge, and illumination. The tuberose, this was quite interesting. Uh, dangerous pleasure, the secret of reaping the greatest fruitfulness and the greatest enjoyment from life is to live dangerously, according to Nietzsche. Do we not just love Nietzsche? I know he's quite controversial in his thoughts uh, at times, but I, I say, you know, he probably has come up with some of the best quotes. Uh, he just He just says things just right. And it's just like, whoa, yes. <laughs> Hibiscus, beauty and happiness. A thing of beauty is a joy forever, John Keats. Interesting flower here. This is called Coreopsis or tick seed. Uh, always joyful. It looks very joyful. 
write it on your heart that every day is the best day of the year. Ralph Waldo Emerson, although I feel like that quote of Emerson's could be said by Winnie the Pooh. Here we have Anemones, which is one that I have been working with, uh, of the last one that I've been working with. I feel like an arrow pulled back and ready to be launched into something big, because it's that idea of anticipation. With, and it's got a lot of different ones. Windflower is one, Woodflower is one, but I love the Windflower because it was actually named after the god of the wind in some way. The beautiful irises are so gorgeous in all of their different colors and glory and, and types. Rainbows and messages. When it rains, look for rainbows. When it's dark, look for stars. Do we not love that? Come on. Here we have the white rose for a new start and wisdom. Somebody pointed out in live chat, we think of the white rose in the fool card. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom, Aristotle. And yes, I'm shuffling. Can you hear that? I'm shuffling in the background of a walkthrough. That's so bad. These do shuffle really nicely. <laughs> I'm putting them down. Oh dear. Here we have the honeysuckle for domestic happiness and devoted affection. I will wind thee in my arms so doth the woodbine, the honeysuckle gently entwist. I love it. The dahlia, beautiful, beautiful flower for dignity. A wise man has dignity without pride. A fool has pride without dignity beautiful lily, uh, majesty and virtue, the false indigo for immersion and intuition. I loved this. When you've reached the end of what you should know, you will be at the beginning of what you should sense. Oh, Khalil Gibran, the poet there. Uh, the trumpet Janish, gentian, G, gentian, Gent, like gentleman, gentian, something like that. Gentian, gentian maybe? What do I know? Power and healing. Crocus for cheerfulness. The Gerber daisy, for, which are beautiful, uh, for um, purity, cheerfulness, and innocence. And this is Thich Nhat Han. I saw another one when I just first quickly went through here, and I was so excited to see a quote by him. And here's another one. The present moment is filled with joy and happiness. If you are intent attentive, you will see it. Oh. Made my day. I did, um, somebody I saw, I think it was Temperance Tarot, who did a little walkthrough of this or an unboxing. She did point out how we can kind of see through these. Of course, there's so many different varieties of each plant, but you can almost see where the, um, you know, from, from when he was doing the drawings in the late 1700s and early uh, 1800s, um, how the plants have changed and morphed um, as obviously they have um, ev uh, evolved and been probably, you know, trained and <laughs> all the things that they do with plants to kind of combine them and create different species. You can see in some of these images how it's the, the look of them have changed. Although, again, there's so many subspecies and categories and um, I don't even, geniuses and things of that nature that it's probably hard to tell, but you can really, to me, see it in this one. Forget-me-nots for eternal memories. The best things in life are the people you've loved, the places you've seen, and the memories you've made along the way. The flocks for unanimity. I always slot it. I always get caught up on it. Un unanimity and harmony. He who lives in harmony with himself lives in harmony with the universe. Marcus Aurelius. Here we have the pink rose for grace and sweetness. The nastratium for victory and conquest. He who controls others may be powerful, but he who has mastered himself is mightier still. Lao Tzu. Here we have the magnolia for nobility and self-esteem. I like this. There is nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility lies in being superior to your former self. Beautiful lilac for the first emotions of love. The tulip for friendship and gratitude. 
the Camellia for Destiny. It is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. Mr. William Shakespeare. The Bellflower for Gratitude. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. Here we have the Morning Glory for Affection and Determination. Sweet William, I love that name, for gallantry and grant me a single smile. I love that. Sweet William Small has form and aspect bright like that sweet flower that yields great Jove delight. Let's look at this one. I love that. Why does it have this little statement, grant me a single smile? There must be something behind that. So let's take a look and see because we can. Sweet William may have taken its name from the old English romantic ballad of Sweet William, the gallant sailor who pledged his faithful love to black-eyed Susan. These two wildflowers are often found together, always blooming at the same time. Others believe the flower's moniker was actually inspired by William Shakespeare. To Victorians, the fragrant flower carried the message to their recipient, grant me a single smile. The tiny tufts of sweet William flowers invite you to come closer and allow yourself to fall under their spell as you gaze into their eyes. Ah, so you would hand, hand this to somebody, send this to somebody who says, oh, just grant me a smile. That's all I want is just a single smile from you. Oh, I love it. <laughs> love it. Hyacinth for playfulness. I loved this. Play is the road, the royal road to childhood happiness and adult brilliance. The primrose for youthful love. The Sacred Lotus, another Thich Nhat Hanh, No Mud, No Lotus for Enlightenment. Love it, love it. Talked about that in live chat. I just love it. There would not be the flower without the mud. There's just no way around it. And it's, it's just such, just, it's, it's four words that just say so much. And I just am so happy that this is in here. Then this is the other one that just made my day because as I was talking about, if anybody has gotten a reading from me, probably three-fourths of the people that have gotten a reading from me have heard me say something about following your bliss, finding your passion and following your bliss because I think that it's just so much an important message. If, we're, if we are following our bliss, um, we are going to be moving in the right direction. And so for this, there to be a quote, this quote here that says, follow your bliss and the universe will open doors where there were only walls joseph campbell it just made me so excited um, and then we have the asters for elegance and patience definitely loves the lao tzu which i do too nature does not hurry yet everything is accomplished we have then, of course, the beautiful red rose for hidden secrets. And by the Buddha, we have three things cannot be long hidden, the sun, the moon, and truth. I love that. So there you have a uh, look at these beautiful cards. They really, let me zoom back out. They, they have, the cardstock is really lovely. You can almost feel a little bit of a linen feel. Yeah, it, it, I don't know if my fingers, because I have been doing some crafty things and have, but I feel like there's a little bit of a linen feel to that. Yeah, this is smooth. There's definitely a little bit of a linen feel. Uh, I, I just, I feel like uh, US Games did a really great job with this deck. It's a little stiff in terms of riffle shuffling. Of course, that should not be the, you know, bar, right? Because a lot of people say don't ever do that, but. That will probably never happen for me. But they, they're, so they're a little stiff, but they overhand shuffle really nice. And they do because of the size, you kind of can get a nice sideways. You know, some people like to go sideways because you do have a lot of control that way. So I do, I really like how they shuffle. It's got a great feel. So let's just do this quick little three card. It's the Fleur de Lis, since that's kind of specific. Um, and so this is going to signify a situation, a course of action, and then that how, if you take that course of action, how things can be improved. So I quite like that.
So for most three cards, when I split, I like to take this one, this one, and then the one at the very bottom. It's just a has no good reason other than a, it's. You do something as I always say. If you do something with consistency, and that's where the power lies. Um, so here we have the violet, the hyacinth, and the peony. Now I want to look and see at the, uh, I love the action here. So this middle one is the course of action, is to bring some playfulness, right? So if, um, but I want to take a look at this one. I want to see how they, what they have as divinatory meanings. I, this one's easy, right? You think about playfulness. That, you know, even in adulthood, play, that sense of playfulness is going to bring about brilliance. We can see with the quote. Um, and I love this. is very clear here. Prosperity and compassion. Um, so it's the idea um, of wanting what you have, right? Instead of ha looking for something else to want here. So I think these are really easy to read in a divinatory way. Uh, faithfulness is interesting. Uh, and the word modesty, because modesty for me, because of the old... Uh, fundamental religion that I was brought up in, modesty is really very much about your clothing. It's about what you wear. Is your collar high enough? Is you kneeling on the ground? Are your skirts touching the ground and making sure they're covered? Measuring to from your collarbone here, measuring from your knee, you know, the length of the hem to your knee. That's what modesty uh, is kind of bound up with for me. And so the, I look at that word and instantly my brain goes there and I think, okay, well, that's what do I do with that? So let's see here. Throughout the ages, there has been a perennial fondness for the diminutive violet. That's true. According to botanical lore, the violet was nicknamed the flower of modesty because it hides its delicate petals close to the ground beneath the heart-shaped leaves. In ancient Greek mythology, the flower symbolized the modesty of Artemis and the loyalty of her companion. So it is modesty as I was thinking. The violet was often used in religious art to signify humility and purity. That's beautiful. Uh, the violet is said to have blossomed when the archangel Gabriel announced to Mary that she would bear the Son of God. Popular during the Renaissance and Victorian periods, the violet has always had positive associations with charming shyness and demure modesty. The inspirational message is that while there's no need to hide your light beneath a bushel, it's not always necessary to clamor for attention, so that sometimes the quietest voice with a modest message is the one that holds the greatest wisdom. So that's interesting there. There is that sense of that quiet voice, that quiet voice of reason. However, if this was a situation, then part of the problem may be that there is too much of, of kind of hiding. It's gone towards hiding hiding under the bushel, uh, depending on what the question, again, I don't, I never like to read with no question, that doesn't do very well, but I could see where you would go in the, that direction as well, but that's, uh, that understanding of maybe something really loud and, and a lot of energy going on and you need to take it down and just be closer to the chest, you know, <laughs> kind of pull things in a little bit like that. Um, and adds, and then the action would be to, to be playful, right? Um, bring a bit of fun in. It's okay. Take a breath. Have a little bit of fun. And that's going to kind of bring about your prosperity in the situation. So I actually think these are going to be really lovely. Uh, and I'm excited to work with them. I do. Let's try this because this is one of the things that I really want to do with these because I'm so in love. And somebody had said in live chat today that they call crystals the flowers of the underworld. How awesome is that? Somebody else, I think Miss Osset, a Queen Osset, had said uh, she called them the bones of the earth, which is also very awesome. But we have this enduring beauty. You, know, you can see the similarities. If you if you take out a bowl of flowers, uh, of flowers, of crystals, like I have a, a, a clear glass bowl full of them, there's just a riot of beautiful colors. Um, and you get that same thing with a, a bouquet of flowers. And yet one is so old and enduring. And the other is ephemeral. The other is kind of uh, comes and goes in cycles. Um, so it's just a beautiful, different, very different energies. But let's just take a look here and see what we have. 
here we have red amethyst. I just had this uh, with a reading that I did the other night. Um, it's about strength and lessons. So if we look at this, and this has the quote, um, each time history repeats itself, the price goes up. It's like, you know, learn what you have to learn. It's time to kind of break from these past cycles. Um, I loved the quote here. And it's about strength. It's about lessons. It's about breaking through patterns that aren't working anymore. So if we kind of use that kind of that over that long, solid, enduring message of the crystal, this, this is kind of my rough thinking of what I would do with this. Uh, now for a, re a reading for somebody after a tarot reading, I'd probably just draw one of each, but for the sake of this Take this one and this one. So then we have the lily for majesty and, vir and virtue and determination and creative achievement. So if we need to break some cycles here, we have the lily is the emblem rare of many virtues good and rare. That's very odd for a poem to have the word rare in there twice because <laughs> you really can't rhyme a word with its own word. But... <laughs> But those are just so silly things. So here we have determination, creative achievement, right? So we're looking for ways to break patterns, old past patterns that aren't working. If we just keep doing them, we're not going to get anywhere that way. So it's, you have to have that strength to be able to break out of that cycle um, and be able to move forward. And there is a sense of majesty about that, a sense of if we're determined, if we're tapping into that strength, I think that the, the lily there with that sense of, of majesty, that word majesty really popping out, as well as, as the idea of, I'm trying to find here, because obviously I haven't read through all these. Um, it's not about what you say or what you feel that matters. It's not enough to talk about it. In the end, it's what you actually do. See, look at that. So if here we have the message that it's time to break some cycles, the lily card here is saying stop talking about it and just do it, right? <laughs> um, but then we have the amaryllis, which we've uh, already looked at or we read the guidebook on, um, where it says that the, it's this, you, this is the moment. The muses have come. They have inspired you. It's time to do this now right fulfill it uh, you've got the the creative you've got the determination and the creative mindset right now to actually do it so stop talking about it tap into your creativity and start to break these cycles and move forward so look at that Again, I know it's, it's not good to bring in another deck probably for this walkthrough, but that's one of the reasons that I bought this deck, so I wanted to give it a little bit of a try. So this has been a look at the very lovely Botanical Inspirations deck and book set by Lynn Arjo. I, I feel horrible. See, so technically, right, the A should let the U say its name, so it might be Aruja, Arujo. But I'm sure it's something entirely different because that is just my luck. <laughs> um, but it is absolutely stunning. Two thumbs up to US Games. Um, great, great job on this creator for, for making a really lovely deck. I'm looking forward to working with it.